Hello, and welcome to the Raising Arrows podcast, your home for all things large family homemaking and homeschooling. I'm your host, Amy Roberts from RaisingArrows.net, and this is episode number 145, Preparing to Homeschool with a Newborn. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Raising Arrows podcast. And today I am sharing something I am super excited to share with you because I know there have got to be some of you out there who are going to be going into the next school year with a baby in tow. And that is so exciting. And first of all, congratulations. But I know there might be a little bit of fear and hesitation, and maybe you're a little unsure of what that's going to look like. Today, I want to share with you some tips and tricks for preparing to homeschool with a newborn. And I think you're going to find these very useful as you prepare this summer to get ready to homeschool this fall. One quick word of caution, if you are due right before you're getting ready to start homeschooling, please consider taking some time off or starting a little bit early and then taking a break. But I think probably the better method would be to just wait and give yourself some downtime about six weeks or so after you have the baby so that you give yourself a little bit of space and time and margin to get used to having a newborn. But we'll talk about all those things as we go through this podcast. So let's jump in. So the interesting thing about homeschooling with a newborn is that no matter how many you have, you will always find yourself in a little bit of a different adventure depending on the baby because each one of your babies is a brand new person with a brand new personality. And you'll have easy babies who it's really no big deal to start homeschooling with. And then you'll have fussy babies who really make it difficult. And you'll have all kinds of different babies that sleep at different times and eat at different times. And you really cannot fully prepare because it is a brand new adventure with every single brand new person. Now I wanna back up just a bit to right before you have the baby, those final weeks of pregnancy. For me, they were not incredibly productive weeks. I am one of those pregnant mothers who just slows down at the end of pregnancy. I just can't keep up, I'm worn out, I'm tired. School goes down to a bare minimum and I usually take a lot of extra time to just prepare for baby and think about what we'll do after the baby comes because I just don't have the energy prior to that. Now, interestingly enough, once I've had the baby, I feel a million times better and I typically am ready to jump back into homeschooling about two weeks postpartum. You may be the opposite of me. And as I said, every baby and every pregnancy is different. So you may have one where you feel really great at the end and you want to go ahead and continue homeschooling or start homeschooling. And then you really have a rough delivery or you need extra time to heal and so you end up taking two or three months right after you've had the baby to ease into homeschooling. Or you might be the opposite. You might be more like me where at the end of the pregnancy, you're pretty worn out. And then after you have the baby, you feel a million times better and you want to jump right in right away. You really need to assess that on a case-by-case basis. So don't get it into your head that you're going to be one way or you're going to get right into school right away and then you end up with a little bit of a rough delivery and it takes you a little bit longer to heal and recover and then you feel like you failed because you didn't match the plans that you originally had. So really have some grace with yourself when it comes to getting ready to homeschool with a newborn. So with all that said, the first thing you need to consider, and again, keep your plans flexible, is what will school look like before, during, and after baby comes? Because we homeschool year round, there were some babies that I decided to quit schooling before Christmas time. And then we picked back up after the baby was born. Um, sometimes I've decided to delay jumping into a new curriculum because I'm going to have a baby. And so there's lots of different factors like that you need to think of. But as you are progressing in your pregnancy, think about before the baby comes, are there things you 
want to accomplish? Are there things that you need to kind of button up and finish up and you're feeling well enough to do that? Now is the time to do that, especially while you're feeling well. Then you need to consider the during. If you have older children, you might need them to continue working on schoolwork while you're having the baby, or are they able to take a break? It's my firm belief that young children do not need nearly the number of school hours we foist upon them. So I never have my little ones do school when there's a life situation that keeps me from being by their side. So in the case of having a baby, I would not have my younger kids continue to do schoolwork, but my older kids who are on their own and independent in most of their subjects would be able to continue as long as whoever was staying with them knew that they needed to be working on their schoolwork while I was gone. Now I birth in a hospital setting and typically our children either stay with grandparents or grandparents come and stay with them. I do not usually expect grandparents parents to orchestrate any sort of school for our children. So most of the time with our older children, I just let them have a break whenever I was having another baby. I wanted them to take that time with their grandparents and I didn't want the grandparents to have to stress about school. If your children have computer school or something that can be fairly automated and doesn't require you or the grandparents to keep track of, you may want to go ahead and have them do school while you are gone. If you give birth in the home and you are right there, I would still encourage you to let them off the hook and let them enjoy having a new baby in the home. But it's really up to you and it really depends on your individual needs and your child's individual circumstances is whether you continue to have them school during the time that you are actually having the baby. And then afterwards, again, do you want them to pick up their independent schooling before you go back to being fully hands-on? Or do you want to give everybody kind of a vacation? And honestly, this is where year-round homeschooling really worked for us. I could take breaks when I needed to. So I often took a break during the morning sickness when it was really bad. And then again, toward the end of my pregnancy and then right Right after I had the baby and then I would jump back in and I felt no guilt because I was schooling year round and we were keeping up just fine and I could take breaks as needed because of the different circumstances that we had going on in our lives, including having a new baby in the house. So you might consider year-round homeschooling, and I have an entire resource page on my blog that I will link in the show notes where you can learn more about whether or not year-round homeschooling is right for you and some different ways of implementing that so it really fits your family's circumstances and lifestyle. Now, just like you get your home ready for baby with all the paraphernalia and everything that you need to do in order to be ready for baby to come home, you also need to get your homeschool in order for a newborn. And really what that boils down to is making the homeschooling part of your life as easy as possible. This may look like internet sites and YouTube videos and printing off worksheets organizing your supplies and your books so they're right by your chair and easy to get to while you nurse the baby. And then once the baby's here, I typically focus my energy on getting the older kids started back into their work. And then I slowly add in the younger kids. This gives me a chance to work through any new routine that I might have with the newborn. And it gives me some freedom to be able to nurse the baby as needed, to get up and do other things because the older children are more independent and I can leave them for longer periods of time. Part of getting your homeschool ready as well is deciding if you're going to go heavy on workbooks or videos or audios in those early weeks and then making a list of some really easy homeschooling materials and resources and lesson plans that you can use while everyone is adjusting to the new baby. And then as you start to get better and better at that adjustment and having that new child in the house, you can then start preparing for what school is going to look like from here on out. Your new normal, can you go? Go back to the way things were? Do you need to change things a bit? By that point, you've kind of learned your baby's rhythm and routine, and you know their personality a little bit better, and you can actually plan your homeschool day a whole lot better if you just give yourself some time and do things very simply in the beginning. 
Another thing I alluded to is making sure that everything is an arm's reach away, close by. Just like I have a nursing mom's basket when I am nursing a baby right next to my chair and it holds things like diapers and pen and paper and a place for my phone and all kinds of things that I want to have right at my fingertips when I'm nursing the baby, I also have a homeschooling mama basket. For years and years and years, my homeschool mom basket it sat right beside my chair on the floor. Now it's in the dining room because I don't have nursing babies. But for years, I taught from my chair in the living room with the homeschool mom basket right next to me and the nursing mom basket on the end table next to me. In that homeschool mom basket was everything I needed. Teacher's manuals, pens and papers, rulers, erasers, markers, anything that I might need in our homeschool day was sitting right there in arm's reach away. This is going to be a game changer for you if you can take the time to organize a homeschool mom basket, allowing you to nurse the baby and teach school at the same time. Along that same line of thought, if you have everybody together in the living room or wherever it is that you are probably going to be feeding the baby, you can create a one room schoolhouse atmosphere. For me, it was my chair in the living room and I had all the kids pile into the living room on chairs and couches and the floor and we all did school in that one room. Nobody needed a table in order to homeschool, and all I needed was my homeschool mom basket sitting right there beside me. So basically, you can choose a room, choose your spot, and then gather everyone there and save yourself a ton of energy and time going back and forth between different rooms to help different kids. I'd also encourage you at this point to start thinking about morning time or working together corporately. What can you do with all of the kids? This is a perfect time to switch to as much group work as you can. Living books, discussions, unit studies. And if you're like me, you will love it so much you will never go back. There is so much that can be done, even with varying ages and stages. So consider what can you do all together to save yourself time and energy. Another thing that's not exactly homeschooling, but it sure has a lot to do with homeschooling in my world is creating some newborn friendly meals. If you manage to make up freezer meals and have family and friends bring in meals, that's fantastic. However, there's a good chance you'll run out of meals long before you're ready to jump back into cooking full time. Now's a really great time to plan some super simple meals that fit seamlessly into your homeschool day. In fact, talk to your kids about some of their favorite meals. I have an entire post on how to create a family friendly meal list that is exactly what your family wants to eat. Look at that list, create that list, and then pick the ones that are super simple and make those as your go-to meal plan during these newborn days. Because friends, lunch is definitely part of your homeschooling schedule. So we really need to plan for that. One last thing that you need to make sure you do in those newborn days for your homeschooling and just your life in general is to learn to take care of yourself. Nourish your body and your brain as you prepare for baby's arrival. It took me eight babies to realize I needed to take better care of myself, especially at the end of pregnancy. With my first child, I basically subsisted on a Snickers bar and Pepsi every single day because I was so tired. I was tired of being pregnant. I was tired of being fat. I was tired of being tired. I wish now I could go back and change that mindset and eat what I know would make a difference afterwards, but I wasn't there and I was really just surviving. And frankly, sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes you're just surviving at the end of the pregnancy. I really feel like with my 10th child, that was what I was doing. I was just surviving and it was very, very difficult. And in the end, it was very obvious why I was just surviving. She had a myriad of issues that were creating issues in my own body. And so it made sense that it was a difficult pregnancy. But at the time, I had no idea what was going on. 
And I had no idea that for six weeks following her birth, we would be living in NICU and not be able to homeschool the kids. Thankfully, I had friends and family who stepped in and took over. Some of them did projects and unit studies with my kids because they were homeschooling mamas too, and they knew that that was where my heart was. Some of them were grandparents, and they just did grandparent things like playing games and helping the kids keep the household running. No matter how much you prepare for those newborn days in your homeschool, there is a chance that something is going to throw you for a loop. Like I said, we spent six weeks in NICU. That was not what I had planned. When I came home, I felt very behind, but I just jumped in where I was. I started with the older kids, got them going, and then I came in with the little kids, and we did fine. Everybody's fine. We managed. We're doing well now, but initially it felt a little overwhelming. You never can tell what those early newborn days may look like. I never guessed that I'd spend six weeks in NICU, but the good thing is I already had prepared my homeschool for a newborn. I knew that we were going to need to ease into lessons. I knew that I wanted to do certain things all together. And even when my timeline didn't work out, I still had a plan that I could implement once we got home with baby. As Dwight D. Eisenhower said, plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. As you prepare to homeschool with a newborn, the planning is indispensable. It's important to do the planning and to think through different scenarios and then to realize that the best laid plans of mice and men are sometimes just going to go awry. But you will still be able to pick out parts and pieces of your plan that will actually work, and that's what's important. Ultimately, what you want to do is enjoy the newborn days. They are so fleeting, and I don't want you to stress and worry about homeschooling when you have such a snuggly, beautiful, wonderful baby to hold. Even if you do not homeschool the entire time you have a brand newborn, that's okay. You can wait till baby has a better rhythm and schedule. Typically around four months, you've got a pretty good idea of when baby takes their naps and when they eat and all of that seems to kind of regulate itself. So if you need to take time off and do bare minimum through those four months, do that. It will all be worth it and it will all work out. I promise. You're not going to fall behind. You're not going to mess this all up. It will all turn out exactly as it needs to. So don't miss those newborn days because you're worrying about homeschooling the other kids. They will benefit from time spent with baby too. The best thing you can do right now is work on being a family. The homeschooling will naturally come. As always, I am blessed to have spent this time with you here on the Raising Arrows podcast. I will see you next time.